Okay. Also herzlich willkommen heute hier ins äh, Studio im Trakelhaus. Das ist die erste Veranstaltung des Studios im Trakelhaus mit dem Forum Demokratische Kultur und Zeitgenössische Kunst. Die heutige Veranstaltung wird auf Englisch stattfinden. Um, so, welcome everybody to today's um, first event of the Forum Democratic Culture and Contemporary Art in the Studio im Trakelhaus. Studio at Trakelhaus. Trakel Studio. Trakel Talk. Um, I'm happy to um, have here with me Sashi Turkov. President of um, the Jewish Students Union. The Austrian Union of Jewish Students. The Austrian Union of Jewish Students. I just know the name in German. And uh, Edi Freudmann, artist from Vienna. Um, we are talking about um, questions of um, representative monuments, memorial culture, And our two guests today are specialists in these questions um, in the Viennese context. So um, we will talk today about one specific case, the Luega Monument, the Luega Square in Vienna and uh, the initiatives that both of you um, partook in or that took part in to confront this square, the history of the square, the history of um, Dr. Karl Luega and um, confront this history in an artistic and in an activist way and find solutions to um, create more awareness and actually change this, the current situation. Um, how would you maybe like to say something quickly about yourself before we start, Sashi? Maybe you start to tell us what it means to be president of the Austrian um, <laughs> Austrian Jewish, Union of Jewish Students. Of Jewish students. <laughs> um, yes, so I am the actually the co-president of the Austrian Union of Jewish Students. We are two presidents. Um, my co-president, Lara Gutmann, sadly couldn't be here tonight because she's working in Berlin right now. But um, we and the board, the, the board of the Austrian Union of Jewish Students, got elected in September 2020. And we are the democratic legal representation of all Jewish students in Austria. And our activism revolves around anti-Semitism or the, the fight against anti-Semitism, but not only that, we also um, stand up against uh, sexism and racism and many different issues that are important for us. And our activism um, around Kaluiga started actually in the spring of 2020 before we got elected, so the president and the board before us started actually with the petition um, around Kaluiga. We started a petition for the, um, to, to take him down, to take down the statue. And um, yeah, we continued this activism and yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Edi, please. Yes. My name is uh, Eduard Freudmann. I'm a visual artist from Vienna. Uh, I have dealt with um, uh, monuments and problematic monuments, uh, particularly um, in the last years. And uh, tonight, um, uh, I would like to stress that I'm uh, suffering from a facial paralysis. Uh, it affects only half of my face. So if it's very boring what I'm saying, then just focus on my left side, because that's the one where I can actually do some mimics. And if it's super exciting, then you focus on the right side. <laughs> Thank you very much for these two uh, introductions. Maybe 
Uh, can we start with the question for our um, international um, viewers? Who is Karl Luega? And what is actually, what is going on? What happened? How did it happen? Edi, maybe you start to like introduce yes. us to this whole co uh, case. Yes. Uh, Karl Lueger was a, um, a politician in Austria. Um, he was the mayor of Vienna between 1897 and 1910. Um, he was um, elected um, under a, um, a, a, a kind of um, a election mode that did not represent the entire population of Vienna. That's very important to stress. So he was not democratically elected as we would understand it today. Um, he was a very popular mayor in Vienna and um, he uh, um, like kind of founded his um, political success um, also on populist anti-Semitism. So he's considered as one of the first or maybe the first populist anti-Semite um, um, and, and, and we can look at him as a kind of a hinge between anti-Judaism, the Christian anti-Judaism, because that's where his party is actually um, uh, rooted in, 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 in like a Christian conservative uh, um, um, setting. So they are also the predecessors of today's ÖVP, the, the Austrian Conservative Party, um, and, uh, and modern anti-Semitism. So he would represent a kind of hinge uh, position between these two concepts of um, hatred against Jews. Um, that's one thing, and as I mentioned, he was also using very populist um, um, methods in his anti-Semitism, and um, that made him very influential um, also, um, among other people, also on Adolf Hitler, who speaks about uh, Karl Lueger in uh, My Struggle, Mein Kampf, as, um, I believe, something like the greatest German mayor of all times, something like that. And uh, Karl Luega is um, considered as one of the founding fathers of this uh, conservative party, so that's why he um, is also post-mortem a very important symbol in Austrian politics. So um, there have been a lot of conflicts going on about the question of how this figure should be represented. Um, already when the monument was erected in Vienna, the one that we will speak about tonight, um, when that monument was erected, there were a lot of controversies um, about the monument, about the question where it should be uh, located and so on. Um, and um, that was obviously in the, in the 1920s, so that was before the Shoah, before the Holocaust happened. Um, with the expulsion of the Jews from Vienna in 1938 to 1945 and the, and the Shoah, um, obviously also uh, his politics um, um, got another um, meaning, I would say, or, or have to be, have to be um, um, looked at in a different way. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and there, are, I mean, one thing that is important to mention is that he's actually the only mayor um, in Vienna with such a prominent um, monument at a very central location. There is one more, but that's another story. He's from like the 17th century, um, but there is there is like from modern times, he's the he's the only mayor who has such a um, representative monument, and. The reason is because he is that uh, political figure that is relevant also for um, political conflicts after, after his uh, uh, passing away. Thank you. So uh, one could say this is a figure that based his um, um, popularity on a certain populist politics that was based on anti-Semitic messages, logics and uh, views. Is that right? Yes. Sashi, uh, maybe you can uh, tell us, so um, how did you came to 
um, how did you get in, get involved with the whole um, process of directing criticism towards this monument and what actually what happened like uh, how did you like um, get active somehow what which steps did you take Okay, so um, as I said before, the, the activism actually, st actually started with the board that was elected before. Um, so in, the, in, in spring 2020, we started a petition that um, called for the, for the takedown of the statue, um, the complete takedown of the statue. And um, the reason for it, I think we, we see as the year sees two major reasons for why this statue and this monument is so problematic. The first one is that um, it actually honors someone that has a really significant role in the way anti-Semitism developed in Austria and also um, in a way that, that we still feel it now. And that's the second reason that um, the monument is today a, a, a meeting point or an identification point, an area where uh, neo-fascists and neo-Nazis identify with him. So for, for example, the neo-Nazi Martin Zellner, um, who is very popular, unfortunately, uh, in, in, in Austria and in the activism, Kaluig is somebody that he identifies with. And this is also a, a real life danger for us because we as a Jewish organization, as an openly Jewish organization, have to fear to, for example, do an action there because we know that if we criticize Kaluiga, then a neo-Nazi feels attacked and that is a danger for us. So these two um, aspects are very important for us. The one, as I said, is the the honoring part that this monument honors an anti-Semite and the other one is that it is a it is a meeting point for, for neo-Nazis. Yeah. So um, since this is all in the framework of the this year's Summer Academy, um, I'm honored to also have a class in the Summer Academy this year, the Salzburg Summer Academy. And uh, in my class we also had a lot of discussions about the meaning of um, such monuments in present times. So, um, is this just history? Do we need this to understand history? How do we react to it? Do we erase certain history if we take down uh, such a monument? Or uh, is it maybe important to take it down or to come up was an um, intervention and so I'm wondering how did you um, um, in the general let's say uh, public how was uh, in the first moment how was the idea received um, that you are asking to take down the monument was how was the how were the reactions yes, Maybe, I mean, since you said that uh, you started the um, petition, maybe you can start and Edi as an artist, maybe you also have a different take to it from like, um, you know, a different perspective. It would also be interesting to hear your take on it. Yeah, so the reaction, I mean, in general, when we face activism that is against anti-Semitism, we always face reactions that are problematic because we um, still have anti-Semitism, structural anti-Semitism in our society. So it's um, also happening in the activism around Kaluiga. Um, and what's what's so important for us, in, in especially this this topic or this uh, um, example, Kaluiga, is that we we ask or we actually. Um, we, we think that it's, 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 a, it's a verantwortung, it's a responsibility of the Austrian population to um, be straight and like not, not have an ambivalent um, opinion on Kaluiga. 
because Kaluiga was an anti-Semite, it's so important for us that you don't face Kaluiga as an ambivalent person and see that anti-Semitism cannot be ambivalent. So you mean in the sense that people say, okay, he was an anti-Semite in some uh, aspects, but he also did good things, like he also exactly. was an important mayor and we're actually like... Um, um, the monument stands for <laughs> the good things. For the positive the, things. For the positive yeah. things. That's, it's so, that's um, such a problematic uh, argument because his good things that he's achieved um, are only possible. He could only achieve these things because he used anti Semitism to get to power. So you can't just say, okay, he was such a good mayor and he did such great things because he wouldn't have able to do these great things without his anti-Semitism and the use of anti-Semitism. And that's so important because he was actually like the first one in Austria who used it in that way, in that populist way, as Eli said it before. And um, to just say that you can just like divide it into two different things, it's just not, it's not, um, it's not right and it, it's just not a reality. I'm asking this because we have these debates often in, in the art world. Um, can you actually divide artists and the work of an artist? Is that possible? We, usually we debate these questions when it comes to problematic, like artists with problematic messages, writings, um, ideas, often in the general context. Um, when it comes to Jews, of course, talking about Wagner, talking about even Heidegger. Um, we show here some videos of, uh, that um, address that in the part of the exhibition, actually. Um, Edi, as an artist, how relevant is um, our monuments like this for cultural self-understanding of a society? Why is it important that we talk about um, memorial as something that is happening and affecting the present political um, environment? Well, I do believe that um, monuments or other manifestations of, um, of um, history um, that are being inscribed in um, in a spatial setting, and in that case in an urban setting, that they are relevant um, because they represent an image of history. Um, they do not represent history. They are not textbooks of history. They are not history books, you know? And if you want to learn about history as such, we can read about it. However, if you look at monuments or other manifestations, because they are not necessarily all monuments, um, they could also be like commemoration plaques, for example, or a tree or whatever um, sign. Um, so if, you want, if, if we look at them, we understand the image of history that was at stake when that particular sign, that particular monument was erected. And um, so we can learn on a meta level, kind of. And that's why I also think it's important to understand these kind of monuments as something that can be altered, as something that should be altered. And I believe that, um, that um, we, we should be um, ambitious enough and, 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 uh, to, to, to actually go for a shift of paradigm that departs from the assumption that these images of history are changing and therefore also the representation of these images can be changing, can be altered. Um, I believe that we should understand these places, these locations, these spatial settings as chances actually to deal with history. Um, if you ask me about the monuments and their function right now um, that, 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 we are, that we are confronted with, um, I think it depends very much. We have to look at each monument, we have to also look at the category of monument, you know, the one that we are speaking about today is a, is a Personendenkmal, so it's a, it's a monument um, a dedicated to one particular person, that's a very specific genre within the, the monument uh, field. Um, it's, a, it's a genre that is quite passé also, um, a genre that was popular 
basically in the 19th century and yes also in the 20th but like with modernism basically and especially with postmodernism it's done this, that genre so we are we are having um, um, in in central europe in, in urban spaces in central europe we are we are confronted with a huge mass of these uh, um, monuments dedicated to people um, to, to to persons and um, some of them are problematic like the one that we are speaking of uh, speaking about today and um, i i just think that as i mentioned before if we if we if we shift our understanding of what a monument is and we and we say goodbye to the understanding that a monument um, is, is, is sacred and cannot be changed from the moment of its erection um, but if we understand it as something that can be altered we can all as a society actually benefit from that um, from that um, yeah, process from dealing with this monument from thinking about how to how to update also um, the representation of this historical image. So one could actually argue that if you look at the image, the historical image, or if you look at history uh, through such a representative monument, it would actually um, be also somehow, uh, how do you say, um, like by altering it, um, by maybe changing it, you are actually showing historical awareness and not um, hiding away from history and um, or duck away and just try to erase it, which is something that we hear quite often. And um, um, there are like several uh, options that we have, right? We could take it down, we could contextualize it with a plaque or whatever, or we could, in a certain way, deconstruct it, like change it in a way uh, that we um, contextu contextualize it in modern day, into a modern day perspective on history. And um, Sashi, you said before your petition was directed in a way that you wanted to take it down. Um, how did the city react? What does the city want? Is there like any reaction to it? Are people uh, listening? So I think also that the reaction can be viewed in many different perspectives because on the one hand uh, the media and, 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 and the political media was very aware of the, of the um, issue and of the conflict around the a monument, um, and especially before the elections last year in October, it got like a, 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 it caught a wave of, of, of attention, which was very important and um, very good also because it, it opened the discussion again of okay, what like why we're actually why are we honoring an anti-Semite in the middle of our city, especially with our history, especially with the situation right now also with COVID is the rise of anti-Semitism um, which I think is very interesting because it's like it's an anti-Semitism that is uh, um, connected obviously to the anti-Semitism we we experience today. This is the one hand. The other hand I think is the nod reaction of the Viennese society. This looking away and not seeing, <laughs> not wanting to see the problem. And I think this is this is a huge problem in general in the in the way that Austria, um, I mean, we talk about Vienna, but in general Austria uh, um, acts with or, or yeah acts around uh, remembrance and around the history of its own country. So there is like an element of denial, right, in I there, or at least of. Yeah, I don't know if denial would be the right word. I think maybe more actively looking away. I mean, denial would be very harsh. Like to denial, okay. denial would mean that that they that you would say that didn't happen or 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 it didn't happen that way. I mean, I don't think I don't. I think it's 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 more um, maybe maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's very hard to say. It's because if you say denial. Then you then then you implicit that 
that you also like have people that just speak out loud, okay, that didn't happen. I mean, it, it, you have these people, obviously, but I think the, the great, the mask is more act, again, as I said, active looking away and, and, and also looking away, of their, away from their own history and like their personal uh, relationship to the history of Austria. But just to, in the beginning you said um, it became a place of um, a right-wing extremist pilgrimage somehow. Mm -hmm. So it's not just any place. It's a, it's not a place where people don't really know or rediscover a certain aspect of history. It, it is a place that is identified by a right-wing, uh, extremist right-wing movement like the Identitarian Movement in, in Vienna. Uh, you already mentioned them as an important um, um, place of identification. So you cannot not see that. I mean, I saw it on the internet. It's, it's visible, it has momentum um, in the um, social media. It, how... Um, I'm just saying that here, so I, I, I think there's some aspect of denial, but then I'm asking myself, how did you react to that? How um, did you confront these people? I mean, there was like, must have been a literal confrontation between these groups. I mean, yes, it's, of course there, there, there is this, this confrontation part, but I would just, it's the easiest way to not handle it and not, and it's the easiest way to look away. It's not, I mean, there's so much happening and as you said, the right extremists are identifying with them and they are uh, uh, trying to protect him from the, how, how do they call it, uh, left extremism and, and they are the only true patriots and they are the only ones who actually understand how amazing Kaluiga was. It's for us and, and in this setting, it's so obvious that we couldn't understand how people can see it, but I, I think for, for, it's the easiest way to just don't see it because then that means that you don't have to work on yourself and on your history. It's the easiest way. So like, is this somewhat connecting to what Eike Geisel meant was like, memorial as a way of, way to forget, maybe, history? I don't know. But I think that, I mean, the idea of monuments being invisible is something that, that Robert Musil, there is a famous, uh, famous uh, promo by Musil who says that there is nothing more invisible than monuments. And yes, it's true. He's speaking, by the way, about this personal denkmal, about these monuments uh, dedicated to, um, to persons. Um, I don't think that it applies to this particular monument. Why? Because it has been actually, um, it has been a very controversial place. Um, for decades, um, there have been lots of um, um, actions being taken against this monument or for the removal or for the reconfiguration of that monument. Um, and there was always a very strong um, 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 counter move of, um, of people who wanted to keep it the way as it is. Now, those who want to keep it the way how it is, is a quite diverse spectrum. Okay, so they are not all the same. Now we spoke about the neo-fascists. Uh, neo yes, they are one part of that spectrum. But there are also the conservatives, the conservative party. They are not the same as the neo-fascists, obviously. Um, they identify with this figure a lot because it's considered one of their founding fathers, one of the founding fathers of their party. Okay? The FLP. The FLP. The people. Um, and especially the old FLP, the black FLP, not the turquoise, the new FLP, because they are post-ideological, they don't give a shit about anything, but the old ones, the old, uh, I mean, they don't give a shit about history. Right? Um, the old ones, they do give a shit about history. Um, and uh, and um, that's the other part of the spectrum, and they are both not a surprise. Um, but what is surprising is that um, the, on, the, on, on the most left, if you want, of that spectrum, 
um, there is the SPÖ, the Social Democratic Party, and they are very relevant because they are governing Vienna since 1918 with the interruption of Austro-Fascism and Nazism, obviously, but since 1945 uh, Vienna has uh, Social Democrat mayors. And, uh, and it's in their power in the end of the day whether that monument's going to remain or not, and if yes, how. So it's very, very interesting from a political perspective that the SPÖ um, has not taken any stance against that monument in the past decades. Why? Why is that? I mean... Because they, there is a kind of um, um, agreement between the two traditionally big people's parties in Austria, the Social Democrats and the, and the Conservatives, that after the Austrian Civil War um, and Nazism, they would kind of collaborate okay, to build up the Second Republic, the new democracy uh, after, after fascism and Nazism. And the part of that agreement was that they would not attack each other's founding fathers. So now, when there is, when there, whenever there are attacks on, 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 on Luega, um, the conservatives in defense, they always start to attack social democrats, you know, historical figures of the social democrats. Um, and the fact that the SPÖ um, did not take a stance, also especially in the last, let's say, two decades, um, is because you cannot win elections with that subject. You can only lose, right? If you raise the subject um, in front of, uh, of, uh, of, of, the, of the voters, you will not gain any votes. And that, by the way, even the Green Party agrees to. Because they, politically, they would definitely oppose that figure, right? But they would not take a stance before ahead of elections. And that was the situation that we were facing uh, last autumn when there were local elections in Vienna. And, um, and I spoke to a couple of politicians about that question, what to do with this monument, and they did not want to come out, especially before the, before the elections. And that was one of the reasons why we, a group of artists, also in collaboration with the um, organizations from civil society, decided actually to take action right in the week before the local elections. And through that action, um, we, we kind of uh, reached a, a, a situation where the political parties had to take stands. And not only the Green Party did, but also the SPÖ did. And that was a novelty in the discussion about that monument, because the, the city secretary for culture, uh, Veronika Kaup Hasler, she is, um, she is uh, nominated by the Social Democrat Party. She, before the elections, she declared publicly for the first time as a social democratic uh, politician in charge, like a, a governing social democratic politician, that this monument is going to be reconfigured. So, coming back to the, to the action, Sashi, what was the action? What did you do? So, um, after the petition in spring, we then in autumn, or at the, at the start actually of the, of the semester, we've, we figured that, um, also with the new elected board, we figured that we, didn't, or we wanted to do more. And um, we weren't satisfied with what, how the situation looked like because we had the petition, a lot of people signed it, but still nothing happened. And um, then we also thought about, okay, what can we do? And also when would be the good time to do it? And as Eli said, the perfect time was actually right before the elections because then you put the politicians or the political parties in situations or in a situation where they cannot not say anything. Um, because the media is covering it so much that, that it would be weak not to say anything. So we also thought about, okay, how can we and what can we do? And um, we planned an art installation there on Wednesday, on, in this week before the elections on Wednesday, um, where we beamed uh, quotes from, from Karl Luega on the monument. Um, the, the quotes um, that said anti-Semitic uh, um, statements. And um, we, we combined it with a kind of a performance where we uh, beamed it and then we, and then we paused it and then we 
like came to the front and, and said something and then it was like a ongoing performance for something like an hour, a little bit more. And it was actually very successful. But um, I, I can't not say that. It was three days after the um, shame watch started. Maybe Edith, you want to say something about that because that was also very important. And that was also, I think, one of the main reasons why our art installation was so successful. Um, because we participated first in the, um, in the shame watch. Um, which was actually, but we didn't. We didn't know that they were also planning something. We caught. We, we became. We, we got in contact by by um, by, by chance, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. And then we participated there and had our own art installation, which was actually turned out to be perfect and a lot better than we had in mind first. So yeah, maybe you want to say something about the art instead about the shame watch. Um, so. I would start actually by, by saying that something very interesting happened to that monument um, a couple of months before the elections. That was in, in July 2020, um, three months before the elections. And um, what happened was that there was um, quite a large number of graffiti was um, placed, was applied to the monument. Um, it covers the, the foundation, the, 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 the pedestal of the monument um, in color and with one word that is written there seven times and says Schande, disgrace. And um, after being applied there, it was removed by the city authorities, whose job it is to remove uh, vandalized mon uh, vandalization um, um, on, on monuments. Um, however, a few days later, it got applied again. Um, the authors of that uh, graffiti are unknown, so um, that's, that's quite usual that they would not come out. Um, I know that the police did quite some effort to find them, but they could not until this day. Um, and what is most remarkable is that those graffiti that were put on the monument in July 2020 are still on the monument today. And that's remarkable because these graffiti, they mark the monument as what it is, as a disgrace. And they make the monument also visible. You know, coming back to Musil um, um, and his statement about the invisible monuments, um, this graffiti actually draws the attention of passers-by um, uh, who, who see the graffiti and who see that something is wrong there because that's not what we are used to, that's not, um, that's not an element on, on, an, on a, a, a 19th century, that's from the 20th, but the whole aesthetic is from the 19th century, that's not a, 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 um, an element, an aesthetical element that should be on a monument. So it draws our attention, so we start to deal with it, we, we start to read about it, we start to discuss about it, and that really functions as a marker. So why is it there? Um, this is actually a result of what we and also other organizations did in that particular week. Um, the city of Vienna, after the graffiti was reapplied, decided not to remove it again before the elections because they knew whenever they remove it and it's being put again there, they, they'll have bad press. And that's what they want to avoid definitely before the elections. So what they did is they kept it there. They got a lot of complaints by, by people who, who, who said, well, it's your job, you have to remove it, what's going on? So what they, what they, uh, how they reacted to it was smart. They, they fenced it off, okay? They fenced it off with a construction fence that did not cover the, the graffiti, you could still read it, but it signalized to the passers-by that it's gonna be taken care of, okay? And it also made it more invisible again, the monument. So I, I spent some time there and I really looked at, at the effects that this fence had. So I am part of an artist group who decided to, to actually um, um, protect these monuments, uh, sorry, to protect this graffiti. And um, what we did was we started, as, as uh, Sashi mentioned, we started a vigil of disgrace, referring to the words Schande as disgrace, um, and guarding those graffiti um, for one week to guard it from being removed. Because 
when the city of Vienna put the fence there, they declared it officially as a construction site. So they also announced it there. They wrote that's a construction site and they wrote um, the graffiti is going to be removed until the Friday before the elections. So our aim was we wanted to protect this graffiti from being removed. And, um, and also when we started this vigil of, of, of disgrace, um, that was on Monday in collaboration with a couple of organizations from civil society, the Jewish uh, Students' Union was one of them, but there was also the Austrian uh, Muslim Youth, there was a Social Democratic Youth, there was a Green Party uh, Youth, there was like a, a, a theater science uh, archive, there was a, a, a queer museum, Vienna, and so on, like up to 50, uh, I think it was 15 or 16 organizations. And they stood guard uh, for three-hour shifts and they were like altering um, their, their, their presence and, um, and um, what happened as well was that um, reliefs that were actually, um, that were actually um, 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 uh, applied on the graffiti, they, 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 shaped, they were shaped like the graffiti but they were three-dimensional and they were painted in gold and they reproduced the, the, the graffiti and actually shifted it on a kind of like yeah, three-dimensional and artistic monumental. level. Say again? Like a monument, part of the monument. Of Made it, yeah, another level of, of making it part of the monument because the graffiti are also part of the monument, especially today we know. Anyway, so these, uh, so these uh, letters that were applied, these golden letters that were applied saying twice uh, disgrace, um, they were knocked off by some neo-fascists who came like after a few hours and they knocked it off and they brought it away. So it drew a lot of attention to the whole thing, it was all over the media. And what was very important is that there, a, a shift in the political discourse happened because um, those who publicly took stands to save the monument, to keep the monument, were the neo-fascists. And that made it, I think, also possible for the Social Democrats, and that's what I mentioned before, for the Social Democrats to, to change their position on it. Plus, also, I really have to give credit to the City Secretary of Culture here, and I really respect her for that, because I can imagine how hard it is to take such a stance in a political party like the SPÖ. Um, when she announced that this monument cannot remain as it is and it has to be altered. So the situation now is that she announced repeatedly, publicly, that it's going to be changed. We don't know what's going to happen. We all hope it's going to be good and not some kind of like halfway uh, easy out solution. Um, and we are also in discussion with the city secretary and other people about what's going to happen there. But it's really... Um, I would say, knowing the city of Vienna, knowing how hard it is to work with problematic monuments, because I did other projects as well in the city, it's really kind of groundbreaking that um, a member of the, of the city government uh, announces something like this. And Sashi, do you think, as um, in your position, um, you have to deal with um, Jewish students in general, do you have the feeling, do you have the impression that there is um, not just a, ch a shift on the le level of, let's say, cultural politics and people in this field who are like, that have raised this awareness somehow or at least this whole situation gives legitimization for people to speak out, which they maybe feared for before or didn't want to. Um, do you think that generally this debate, did it change anything? Do people refer to this um, whole cause maybe in a way as an argument or, you know, is it, is it influencing the, a broader uh, culture in the society? Um, yes. Uh, I think in general right now we live in a time where uh, Personen, Denkmale, Denkmäler, um, like uh, uh, monuments for um, persons, one for uh, single persons, um, are being questioned and there is a kind of like this, 
you feel it, I also feel it in, 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 in the debates I have and I, the, the discussions I have, you feel this, this, this um, mood or, or this ambience that's, that is starting something. And I think, I think it also, also has to do a lot with the movement in America and also in uh, um, England, where in general, the idea of a monument is not something legitimate forever. Um, gets it, 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 it gets challenged or, or, it, or it's scratched. And I think also with the Black Lives Matter movement that um, fortunately also happened here in, in, in Austria last year, I think the, the, the mass or, or the society in Vienna or part of it um, started to, to understand or started to get friendly with the idea that a monument doesn't have to stay forever like it was built. And I think that is for Austria a huge step because Austria is very comfortable and we like to stay in our comfortable places and not change if, it's not, if it doesn't have to change. So I think that also has something to do with, with the way that these, um, this activism revolved during the, in the last year. Um, and I think also, as Edi said, the, the one, one big aspect is that the people that spoke for uh, Luega were Nazis, neo-Nazis. And um, yeah, and maybe it's also important to say I, um, the, the monument is, is contextualized already right now. It is with a small, tiny um, uh, poster or how do you call it? Plaque. Plaque behind it like almost in the shade, like in the trees that says, yeah, Kaluiga was a great mayor, but he also did problematic stuff and he was an anti-Semite or he, he has had anti-Semitic anti views. And why the, we as, um, I, I would call us a Jewish, the young Jewish voice are so radical, which I don't think we are, or viewed as radical. And why I think it's so important to be radical is that and our idea is very radical. I mean, we, we had the petition for the, for the um, removal of the statue. And I think it's so important because if we think about contextualizing it, then there are also very um, not radical ideas that I think still, and we think still honor him. For example, the, um, there was a uh, competition. competition. Uh, ten years ago, and how to, uh, with ideas how to contextualize the statue, and the the, the idea that one was a shift of three point five degrees, and I think that still honors him, even if it, even, like you almost don't see the shift. You only see it if you look exactly like if you're standing right in front of him, and it's like this. And I think, an an anti-Semite that stands like this is still an anti-Semite that is honored in the middle of Vienna. So I think it's very very important to, to think about, does the contextualization still honor him? And would a neo-Nazi still see him and think, okay, wow, I can still identify with this statue. And I think that a neo-Nazi, if he sees Kaluiga like this, still thinks he's a neo-Nazi and he's really cool. And he's an anti-Semite and I can identify with his anti-Semitism. Also, if it stands like this. It's, so it's, if I, heard, I heard this um, approach before and I thought, okay, it's going to be like, really like, Crooked somehow, you know, being in an artistic intervention. Then you told me it's like three point five degrees. <laughs> yeah, that must be a joke. It's really. Um, it's like this. It's like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I mean, uh, maybe I would like to open this um, talk to uh, the audience. Are there any questions? Uh, we have also audience outside and I can't see or hear if they have a question, but uh, since I think you can hear me out there, come inside if you have questions. No questions? You have a question. Thank you. Yeah, I have one question. You talked about the statue. Uh, but, uh, uh, and you mean the whole monument or you make a difference between statue and foundation? So, when we speak about 
the first, okay, that, that's actually an important question because the petition in the first place that we did last spring called for the removal of the whole statue, which means the, the part, the, the zocker, the foundation. The foundation and the statue itself. Um, when we speak about what we are fighting for today, we speak about the removal of the, of the only the statue and the contextualization of the um, foundation of the statue. Yeah. Yeah. So the foundation would still be there and still contextualized in, as a, in, in, in an artistic way or with a plaque or is, would there be like an artistic intervention? So it's very important to, to stress that those people who criticize the monument and who want to have it changed, they don't agree on how it should be changed, right? And I'm not only speaking about like particular ideas, but I'm speaking about the general approach, like which category of change do we go for? And, um, and the question that was posed is actually pointing exactly in that, in that direction, because that's one of the options. Um, I would just um, um, name what I think uh, the options are, and I can also say what, what I personally um, um, would prefer. Um, in general, the options are to remove the entire object. The entire object consists of the figure um, and the pedestal uh, the, the socket, the foundation of the, of the monument. Um, Marlene Strerowitz, uh, uh, um, Austrian writer, who was um, also speaking at the opening of the Schandwache, the Vigil of Disgrace, she um, uh, presented us a very nice term in German. She gave it to us as a present. It belongs to all of us now. And it is called the Weggestaltung. So that is, um, yeah, the, the, the kind of reconfiguration of removal, if you want. Um, uh, so that's one option. And I think it's a totally legitimate position. So I, I would also be fine to go that way, right? Um, the other option is to, is to reconfigure the monument in an artistic way. And the third option would be to contextualize it. Now, to con reconfigure or to contextualize it does not necessarily um, make a hierarchy in terms of like how radical the steps are because a contextualization technically is what we, for example, have today. What Sashi said, the small plaque that, that gives a context, that gives an explanation, is a contextualization. However, it's first of all, it's small. Second, the text is like um, not enough. And third, the problem always with, with these textual contextualizations is that they do not um, take into consideration the aesthetical um, power of a monument. Okay, so they pretend that only by speaking about the monument you could actually challenge it, which I don't believe is true. I'm an artist, so I believe in the, in, in, in spatial settings and in aesthetics, right? Um, so that would be like the minimal version of the of the contextualization, and the maximal version would be. I don't know what. There was, for example, a, 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 a Green Party politician who, who, who made the proposal in the, in the newspaper. She wants to put a, a big monument to Theodor Herzl next to it. That would also be a contextualization. If we like it or not, it's a different question, but that would be a contextualization. Um, but it would be quite big, like, because I think she said she wants to have it bigger than the Lueger monument. And the Lueger monument is quite big, right? So. Um, the reconfiguration would be, uh, for example, the proposal uh, uh, that was selected by, by that um, self-appointed competition. It's also important to, to say that this competition 10 years ago was organized um, by colleagues from the, from the University of Applied Arts. It was a great project and made a lot of, um, drew a lot of attention to the whole monument and the whole subject. I was never fond of the, of the result of the, of the proposal that the jury picked because I always thought it was just not enough. And especially today, after 10 years and what had happened since then, also in the way of how we deal with monuments, it's still not enough. But that would be a kind of minimal version of artistic reconfiguration because it is actually changing the, the, the substance of the monument, yeah. right? 
and maxim a more maximalist approach to it would be like I don't know what like a total deconstruction and we take it apart and we dig it in or we I don't know what we grind it and we you know like that kind of thing what me personally what I am favoring is to take this the, the statute meaning the figure of Luega to put him in the in the museum in the Wien Museum uh, that's the city museum they should decide what to do with it. They already have a great deal of, of, uh, of Karl Luega uh, devotionalien, like Karl Luega statues, and I don't know what, his hair and like everything, you know. Um, so it would fit there very well. Um, and the, the foundation, the socket, which is quite big also, if you look at uh, photographs, uh, you will see that. And which is also, and that's interesting, which is also understood to represent all his um, all his positive deeds that are always being mentioned by the people who defend him, so they are presented on this uh, um, uh, um, on this socket in the forms of allegories. So I think that this socket should remain, but it should be artistically reconfigured. So in a way that it's not only contextualized, but really reconfigured in a way that. The, that the altering is actually intervening in the substance of the, the pedestal. Sashi, do you think after, you know, you call for the complete uh, dismantling of this um, monument, um, what do you think about the artistic intervention that Edi just proposed? So do you think this could also contribute to the debate or do you still think that maybe this is still not enough or how do you see it? Um, <laughs> so yes, you're right, at the, in the first place, in the, at the beginning at, um, with the petition we called for the complete removal of the foundation and the statue, uh, but the idea of removing the statue and leaving the foundation still creates the dishonoring. And this is the most important aspect of this activism for us. And I also think that with Karl Wega, the person being gone there, neo-Nazis, neo-fascists would not um, identify with the foundation as much as they would, or I don't actually think they would identify. But, I mean, we can't know. Obviously, it could be possible that we um, take down Luega and then we leave the foundation and reconfigure it in a drastical and a radical way, and still neo-Nazis would identify. I don't think so. Or they would go to his grave, or they would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think, and, and that's why we also, we agreed. I mean, we if, if you're doing activism, you always have to, build alliances. This is like one of the most important part because especially if you're a minority, you're um, always, that like one of the most important aspects is to find uh, people who want to work with you together on a cause because then you're stronger and then you have also diverse uh, backgrounds and, and, and you're more um, legit. So in the, in, in the activism we, we, we build great alliances with great people and, and we came to a con conclusion together that this would be the most, uh, the, the best way or, or our, the, the decision that we are all um, happy with or, or, or that we would all agree on. Um, and the reason for it is that this, this uh, idea or this version of how we would um, deconstruct or, or reconfigure it um, would dishonor him. Yeah, it's very important to stress the fact how long the process is and how much debate there is around it and how much consideration and rethinking and so on. I mean, I think that goes quite contrary to the claim that these processes are like fast, radical and, uh, I don't know, um, unsought full. Yeah. Uh, it's quite the opposite. It's quite a big, let's say, service to um, how to deal with history appropriately and how to reconsider it carefully. Um, I saw another question in the audience over there. Um, please. Yeah, hello. Why don't we often like 
or generally maybe ask artists how to deal with these kind of questions since it's a political problem. I mean, is it a sort of compromise that there is no, I mean, political parties cannot like really uh, find a solution. That's why they ask artists. I mean, what is the reason for involving them actually? Um, Eddie, you are the invited artist here on stage. <laughs> This is for all. Uh, it's, uh, okay, no, let's start here. Sashi, why do you think that um, artists should um, answer? Um, or do you think? Or do you think? Yes, I do think so, because the monument was also built by an artist. So I think the whole process of building monuments. <laughs> Sorry, what? It's a matter of guilt. No, I mean, no, 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 but I'm. <laughs> no, uh, I mean that. The whole process of a monument is in an artistic uh, setting, so I think just saying that that is a, it, that it's only a political problem would also just like ignore all the artistic sides of it, which I think would be ignorant to be like to answer it like that. But of course, it's not only an artistic question and not only an artistic debate. And you see, like we see it in the debate, not only artists are involved. For example. Um, which I think is also a, a, a perfect um, uh, um, representation of, or, or a perfect um, sign for act, like for 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 activism, activism that works and, and, and activism that has worked and, and like a lot of work that has put into activism for a long time. And when was it in May? With the the round table. Um, we were also Edi as well as me were invited to the round table that was initiated by Veronika Kaupasler. Um, and there were artists, uh, Edi was invited as an artist, we were invited um, as the, I would say, as a Jewish pressure group. Um, but there were also arch arch architects and also politicians. Most of them were politicians that were invited there. So I think it's not. It's not viewed as an only artistic question. I think the the people that would actually then change it and 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 remove it, deconstruct uh, um, whatever the the solution would be, I think the people should be artists and architects because the that's their craft. It would be weird if a politician says, "Okay, we put a bird on his head because that represents I don't know." freedom or something, you know what I mean? So I think, I don't know, you know, I like yeah. that idea. so I think it's, it, it's, it's quite right that artists are involved in this discussion, but yeah. what do you think? Edi, short answer. Um, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's one part of our expertise as artists to deal with the representation um, in space. Um, also with the historical representation, also in public space. Um, and I also um, agree with what Sashi says. Um, I, I think that um, in the process of building a monument or reconfiguring a monument, but also building a monument, I would consider it also like a transdisciplinary process where actually people from different fields would come together. Um, and uh, that would involve uh, historians, uh, architects, but also educators. Uh, I think that's also very important to, to think about actually how to convey uh, or how to think about how the message of such a, of such a, um, a manifestation can be conveyed. Um, so I believe very much that, that the future of, 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 of these kind of um, monument competitions will have to be uh, transdisciplinary. However, I do see it, um, um, the, the audience uh, spoke about guilt, um, I, I don't feel guilty for having like a, 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 a another artist building such a monument, but I do feel a responsibility as an artist to actually point at problematic monuments and, um, and put them on the, um, uh, on the table to discuss about them. Are there any more questions? I um, take this as a no, and thereby I would like to uh, thank you again, Sashi Tokov, Edi Freudmann, 
my name is Leon Kahane. I also want to thank my colleague Fabian Bechtle, who um, um, is the co-founder of the Forum Democratic. Uh, Austrian Jewish Unions? Again, please. Austrian Jewish Unions? Yes, <laughs> of the Forum Democratic Culture and Contemporary Art. I also would like to thank the uh, Summer Academy. I would like to thank uh, Sophie Gold and the team of the Summer Academy who made all this um, possible. I also want to thank uh, Friedrich Rücker for the great architecture that we have, have here in this studio. And um, tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock noon, there will be another talk, this time in, in uh, German language, with Robert Obermeier, who is um, um, who's, um, working at the University of Salzburg and is also active in Erinnern.at. And he will also talk about um, street names and the names of uh, spaces, places, and their <coughs> representative role. Thank you very much. Um, did I forget anything? Wait, before I end this. Um, no, I think that's it. And hope to see you soon.